Is Kyle Shanahan compromising Trey Lance? So on Twitter, it's a dude named Grant Cohn who covers the 49ers. He said, if Trey Lance had played well in this game, he's talking about the Raiders game, fans would have want him to start week one. Kyle Shanahan can't let that happen. So he called a bunch of passes, not the typical 49ers offense. And basically the sentiment is that Kyle Shanahan set Trey Lance up to fail in this game against the Raiders. Now, Trey Lance, if you were to judge him based on the box score and the stat sheet, he had a fantastic performance. 10 of 15, one passing touchdown, 112 passing yards, no interceptions, no turnovers. He had a flawless performance if you just judge him based on the stats. But if you actually watch this game like I did, Trey Lance did not look good. I mean, he does not look comfortable inside the pocket, and he doesn't look comfortable just being a quarterback in general. It kind of looks like he's forced to play quarterback. It just doesn't look like the position comes natural to him. And when he threw that touchdown in the, in, in the red zone, it really should have been an interception. But it ended up getting bobbled and the tight end, luckily enough, had his head on the swivel and he was able to come away with the reception and score the touchdown for San Francisco. But that was a really bad decision by Trey Lance. And even before that touchdown drive occurred, the first opening drives of the game, I saw Trey Lance look really indecisive with what he wanted to do with the football. There were a couple of plays where he would look one way, he'll think about throwing the football, and then he'll pump fake, and then he'll end up taking the sack or just giving up on the play. That still shows that Trey Lance has a lot of improvement that still needs to be made. And at this point, I think it's safe to say that Trey Lance is pretty much a bust. How long does it take to figure out if a guy can or cannot play. I don't think that it takes four years to figure out what a guy is. Trey Lance is going into year three now. We've seen a good sample size out of Trey Lance. And some people may argue that we still need to see more. Listen, anytime you have a fluke touchdown like the one that Trey Lance threw in this game, it kind of shows me that you're not that good. And even the second interception that he nearly threw right before halftime was a bad read. One thing that Trey Lance still isn't able to do is be effective in Kyle Shanahan's West Coast offense. You see, this offense is all about timing. It's about accuracy. It's about anticipation. Can you throw guys open? Trey Lance still doesn't have the ability to do that. He doesn't look like a good fit in this offense. And I've been telling a lot of Trey Lance defenders that even though you may not consider him a bust, I think it is fair to say that he's just not a good fit with the 49ers and he doesn't do what Kyle Shanahan wants him to do, which is be able to be an accurate distributor of the football. Why do you think Jimmy Garoppolo and Brock Purdy were so more effective in this system compared to Trey Lance? And you can take this approach and make a bunch of excuses for Trey Lance, say that Kyle Shanahan put him in a situation to fail because he had to throw the football so many times. I don't really think that's a good explanation or a good excuse for Trey Lance because this is the preseason. I want to see what you got, fam. I want to see you throw the football. I get that he didn't have the best offensive line play. But Russell Wilson was the most pressured quarterback out of all of the quarterbacks who we saw throw passes in the preseason. And he still had a pretty solid outing against Arizona. You see, part of being a good NFL quarterback is being able to handle pressure. And Trey Lance didn't do a good job at that. Yeah, he made some throws where he got outside the pocket and made some good throws on the run. But when he was under pressure, he just wasn't good. And in the NFL, you're not always going to have clean protection every single play. And weren't people saying that Trey Lance needs more reps as a passer so he can continue to improve throwing the football? So this was a good opportunity for him to get more reps throwing the football, and he wasn't able to make the most of it. And how long do we have to wait for Trey Lance to be able to put it together? When do we just say, you know what, enough is enough. Trey Lance just isn't that guy. A lot of people that I've heard when they've been touching on this situation 
have said that they expect Trey Lance to be the third string quarterback behind Purdy and Sam Darnold, and I agree with them. I mean, you're looking at somebody who threw a fluky touchdown when he essentially threw the ball into double coverage. That was a bad play. That was a read that he never should have made. And then he had to throw really early into the game where he was trying to throw an out route to a receiver where the cornerback was lined up in outside leverage. He should have understood that with the cornerback playing outside leverage, it might not have been the smart decision to try to throw the out route. I just don't really get Trey Lance defenders, man. It seems like a lot of Trey Lance defenders keep trying to hype him up because of the potential. But when are we going to see that potential actually turn into results? This is a performance-based business. You don't have time to wait for potential. You don't have time to wait for a guy to figure it out. The NFL moves fast. And if you can't get a guy who can perform, guess what happens to the head coach? Nine out of ten times, they get fired unless you can get lucky enough to get another quarterback who can make up for you missing with this Trey Lance selection, i.e. Brock Purdy. And regardless of what Brock Purdy does at training camp, We've seen Brock Purdy in the actual game, and he's looked way better than Trey Lance. And people made the argument that, oh, we haven't seen Trey Lance play in too many games. We need to see him play the same amount of games as Brock Purdy. You can make another argument against Trey Lance. You can say that, well, if we were, if we were to compare Trey Lance's first couple of starts to Brock Purdy's first couple of starts, why has Brock Purdy been the better quarterback? You see, we got to stop with this whole potential bullshit. Potential doesn't win you games in the NFL, and it damn sure doesn't win you championships. Do you know what waiting on potential gets you in the NFL? It gets you fired. It gets you out of a job. You see, the 49ers have a roster that's built to win now. It would be different if we were viewing the 49ers and saying that this is a roster that's not fit to compete for a Super Bowl, if this was a team that was in a rebuild like Indianapolis, it would be understandable. Kyle Shanahan isn't a first-year head coach. He's been coaching for the 49ers for a couple of years. He's been to the Super Bowl. He's been to a couple of NFC championship games. He doesn't have time to wait for Trey Lance to get it all together. And throwing Trey Lance out there week one, it's a disadvantage. Do you think that Trey Lance will give the 49ers a be the better chance to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers week one than what Brock Purdy would? If you think that Trey Lance gives the 49ers a better chance to have success this season, you're delusional. Straight up. My guy Juice, love my brother to death, but he keeps saying that, oh, the 49ers don't scare anybody with Brock Purdy at quarterback. You think defenses are scared of Trey Lance at quarterback? The same QB who threw a fluky touchdown into double coverage and only got saved by his tight end having his head on a swivel? Like the 49ers right now, man, they're really lucky that they had Jimmy Garoppolo and Brock Purdy. If Jimmy Garoppolo, let's say they would have traded him like when they wanted to last year. If they didn't have him last year, their season would have resulted in a disaster. Trey Lance, even when he was healthy, he still wasn't good. He still didn't light the world on fire. Meanwhile, Brock Purdy comes in, first game against the Miami Dolphins, having no first team reps, no chemistry with the starting wideouts, and absolutely dominates and leads the 49ers to the NFC Conference Championship. If it hasn't taken Brock Purdy so long to come in and to, and to perform at a high level, why is it taking Trey Lance so long? He's in. His third year in the NFL. You think he would have gotten it by now. You think he would be more comfortable. He had to change his throwing motion. What happened to the new throwing motion? Obviously, that went down the window because I didn't really see any improvement in his throwing motion in this game. I mean, he made a couple of good passes when he got the ball out fast. But that was only about on two or three of his throws. Like, you see, Trey Lance, he may not be a bust, at least yet. I would say he's a bust, but if you don't want to consider him a bust, I'm not going to push back against that. But I will say that I think we've seen enough out of Trey Lance with the 49ers to know that this just isn't going to work.
You can say that he was set up to fail because he had to throw the football a lot against the Las Vegas Raiders with a bad offensive line. But guess what? This is the preseason. Bryce Young was under hella pressure against the New York Jets. And he wasn't even nowhere near as bad as what Trey Lance was, even though he was in for less drives than what Lance was. He looked calm, cool, and collected under pressure. Trey Lance under pressure, most like Frosty the Snowman on the summer day. I don't know how long 49ers fans think that Trey Lance is going to have to get things figured out. This is a performance-based business. And if you can't perform, guess what happens? You get fired. You're out of a job. It doesn't take this long for a top five pick to show you if he can play or can't play. We've seen Zach Wilson his first couple of years with the New York Jets. And what did we figure out? He just can't play right now. And with Trey Lance, we're seeing the same thing. You see, this isn't the early 2000s anymore where you start a quarterback and you wait four to five years to figure out what they have. These quarterbacks coming out now are way better immediately than what they were decades ago. Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, even Tua, all three of those quarterbacks hit the ground running during their rookie seasons. Cam Newton, somebody who people thought was the project when he was coming out of Auburn because he didn't have any experience running a pro-style offense, came out his rookie season and hit the ground running. Same thing with Andrew Luck. When you invest a top five pick into a quarterback, you expect them to be able to make an immediate impact. And if not an immediate impact right away, you expect for them to become a really good quarterback within their second year in the league i.e. Patrick Mahomes, you even get to see some glimpses of potential like you see, like you saw in Jalen Hurts, his second year in Philadelphia. But we don't see this with Trey Lentz, and he has an incredible coach. And Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan is one of the best offensive minds in the NFL. How are we going to say that he put Trey Lentz in a situation to fell against the Las Vegas Raiders because he asked him? To do what your quarterback is supposed to do, which is throw the football? I mean, I get the offensive line was bad, but there were a lot of throws that Trey Lance left on the table and a lot of bad decisions that he made when he had a clean pocket. When Trey Lance was throwing from a clean pocket, he wasn't doing anything special. He still wasn't good. And I'm not hating on Trey Lance, but I'm just telling you guys the truth. If you ever play football... Or any level, high school, college, middle school, it doesn't take you long to figure out if a guy can or cannot play. Trey Lance isn't even doing good in practice. Brock Purdy, he can afford to throw interceptions. Who cares? We know what he does in a road game. He carried the 49ers to an NFC championship. When Trey Lance gets into a road game setting, he struggles. The statistics are statistics, but... They're lacking context. You see, it's easy to make an argument for Trey Lance having a great performance when you just strictly judge games based on the stats. But if you were to watch this game, there's no way you can tell me that Trey Lance looked like a better quarterback against the Las Vegas Raiders than what he did previously before that injury. He still looks like the same quarterback, still can't read defenses, still looks really indecisive. He just doesn't look comfortable being a quarterback. Maybe he should move the tight end. Maybe he should change positions. Or maybe he just isn't a good fit in Kyle Shanahan's offense. He can't throw with anticipation. He doesn't throw guys open. And, you know, being able to be an accurate passer is kind of something that you either have or you don't. You can improve your accuracy. But if you want to be Drew Brees accurate, that probably isn't going to happen because elite accuracy, you're kind of born with. You're kind of born with the elite ability to be able to throw guys open. Not everybody can have the accuracy and the precision as Drew Brees. Some of that's just God-given. Trey Lance just isn't a good quarterback right now. And I don't get why people like Grant Cohen continue to make all these excuses about him. If Trey Lance had played well in this game, fans would want him to start week one. Kyle Shanahan can't let that happen, so he called... A bunch of passes, not the typical 49ers offense. Bro, Kyle Shanahan doesn't give a damn or flying F about what we have to say as fans. If fans controlled what these head coaches do, I don't think anybody would have wanted Trey Lance. People probably would have wanted Justin Fields over Lance or even Mac Jones over Lance. 
Trey Lance is still a very inexperienced quarterback. He only really started like, what, one year fully for North Dakota State when he was coming out? Kyle Shanahan may not just be great at developing quarterbacks that are just very raw. He may just be great with quarterbacks that just already have a lot of experience. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because in the NFL, you should always go with the guy who gives you the best chance to win immediately and not the guy who has potential because potential doesn't win you shit in the NFL. You know what potential gets you when you wait on it for too long? It gets you fired and unemployed. I don't think Trey Lance was set up to fail by Kyle Shanahan. I don't think that Kyle Shanahan is intentionally compromising Trey Lance. Why were they intentionally trying to make Trey Lance look worse when they want to trade him? He's not good, so of course they want to take every opportunity to gas him up. Of course you want to see Trey Lance throwing the football hella times because you want to see what you got in him. You want to see if Trey Lance actually is going to be able to deliver an accurate pass in the regular season when the game speeds up. And you want to showcase him to other teams if you want to trade for him, but nobody really has a lot of interest in trading for Trey Lance. Nobody wants to pay what's left of his guaranteed salary on his rookie deal, and nobody wants to invest in an experiment right now that looks like it can't even be serviceable. I don't think Trey Lance is a good quarterback. I don't even think he's a good backup quarterback. I think Trey Lance would be better off going to the XFL or the USFL and getting development there because the NFL game is obviously way too fast for him and he can't make the necessary improvements and development needed to succeed at the NFL level right now. This is a performance-based business. Miss me with all that BS about potential and how he has more upside and more talent than Brock Purdy. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And the great words of Tim Tebow, Trey Lance may have the more physical tools than what Brock Purdy has, but Brock Purdy is able to execute. He's able to play within structure. He's able to run this offense the way Kyle Shanahan wants it run out of his quarterback. Trey Lance can't do what Brock Purdy can. And you know, it's a major disappointment. But to say that Kyle Shanahan is intentionally trying to compromise Trey Lance, I think it's ridiculous. And I think that you Trey Lance fans or you Trey Lance fanboys are starting to hit an all-time low. Why would John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan want to compromise somebody who they traded up potentially, what, three first-round picks to get? That doesn't make any sense. They're trying to give Trey Lance every opportunity they can for him to prove himself. And not every opportunity may be a great opportunity. But guess what? In life... You're not always dealt a great hand. Sometimes you got to take a bad hand and still find ways to win the game with it. That's what life is about. Life is about sometimes taking lemons and turning them into lemonade. You see, Trey Lance may not have had a great offensive line against the Las Vegas Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders defensive line was eating up that offensive line that the 49ers had up there for the whole entire game. But let's not act like Trey Lance didn't have opportunities when he had clean pockets to throw the football from and still made bad throws and bad decisions. In the red zone, he made bad decisions. That should have been an interception. He threw two nearer interceptions. That should have been INTs. And if this was a regular season, they probably would have been interceptions. But I don't see any Trey Lance fanboys talking about that. You see, we got to stop making excuses for people. We just got to judge people for who they are. That's the problem with a lot of us in life. We don't see people for what they are. We see people for what they could be. And seeing people for what they could be gets you nowhere. It gets you disappointed. Because seeing people for what they could be leads to unrealistic expectations. Sometimes you got to see that a guy can't play and hop off that thing fast. The New York Jets realized that Zach Wilson, at least at that moment last season when they benched him, realized that he wasn't it. He wasn't the answer at quarterback for him, and they had to find another way to win games and find a way to upgrade the QB position, hence why they traded for Aaron Rodgers. If they couldn't have landed Aaron Rodgers or a guy in Derek Carr and they had to start Zach Wilson again, Robert Sala probably would be out of a job at the end of this season. Trey Lance, if he was the 49ers' only solution at the quarterback position, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, they would be in hella trouble. Trey Lance just isn't good. We've seen a good amount of Trey Lance, and we still haven't seen anything that has really given us a lot of confidence 
to say, oh, yeah, he's going to be the guy. All that we see out of Trey Lance is, you know, things that make you create more excuses for him. Instead of you getting more confidence in Trey Lance, you got to create more excuses for him. You got to try to create dumb narratives. No head coach in the NFL is intentionally trying to compromise their quarterback, especially when they invest three first rounders in the trading up for them. That just doesn't make any sense. I don't really understand this tweet. I really don't. It's the preseason. Nobody's running anything in the preseason that they're going to be running during the regular season. I want to see what Trey Lance has as a passer. I don't give a damn about running the football in the preseason, man. Show me what you got. Can you deliver an accurate pass? Can you effectively be accurate in the short intermediate passing game? All these are things that Trey Lance has been unable to do. Like, when do we just stop with the nonsense? When do we just cut the bull crap? And when do we just come out and just admit the fact that the 49ers whiffed on Trey Lance as a starter? Every single week, it's new excuses for Trey Lance. We got to continue to move the goalposts for him. Why are we continuing to move the goalposts for a guy who hasn't proven anything? Brock Purdy just took this team to the conference championship last year. And yet you still have people trying to create a false narrative that Trey Lance is the better quarterback when he hasn't demonstrated it. Trey Lance had all offseason when Brock Purdy was rehabbing from that elbow injury to show that he was better. First team reps. And he can't even outduel Sam Darnold. Why is Sam Darnold still getting the same amount of first team reps as what Trey Lance was when Brock Purdy was out? I don't think a lot of you people are being realistic and being fair when it comes to how you evaluate Trey Lance because you're thinking about what the 49ers gave up to get him. It doesn't matter what they gave up to get him. What matters is the results that he's delivering right now and the results that he's giving you are none. He's showing you why you should have had traded up so much to get him in the first place. Why can't we just admit that the 49ers made a mistake? It doesn't take three to four years to figure out if a quarterback is good anymore. Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. It didn't take them four to five years for them to figure it out. Why is that? You can't say Trey Lance is in a bad situation. He's playing for one of the best head coaches, one of the best offensive minds in the NFL. When are we just going to say that Trey Lance just isn't it? You don't got to say he's a bust, but can we just agree that this man just isn't a good fit in Kyle Shanahan's offense because the pudding is on the table. It doesn't take long in today's NFL to figure out if you have the franchise quarterback on your roster or not. There's a reason why they didn't trade Jimmy Garoppolo and why they brought him back. They knew that Trey Lance wasn't it. There's a reason why Brock Purdy has already been penciled in to start over Trey Lance. They don't really need a quarterback competition between Lance and Purdy because it's not even close. Trey Lance had several opportunities to prove himself. This offseason, there are OTAs, mini camp, and training camp before Brock Purdy came back. And Brock Purdy came back, and he was still better than Trey Lance and Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch's eyes. If Trey Lance was doing so well in practice, the gap between him and Purdy would be really minimal. And we would actually have a legitimate quarterback battle on our hands. Trey Lance didn't even really beat out Jimmy Garoppolo last year. They just went ahead, after one year of him sitting behind Jimmy G, they just went ahead and named him the starter without him really beating out Jimmy G and showing that he was better. So it's no surprise that he's expected to be the third-string quarterback to start week one of the NFL season. You can make all these excuses and try to twist all these narratives all you want to, but at the end of the day, how much of this falls on Trey Lance just not being able to properly execute? Why are we trying to say that Trey Lance is being compromised by the 49ers? This is false. No team that gives up as many first rounders as what the 49ers did to trade up for Trey Lance is going to intentionally try to compromise him, especially if they are not really high on him and want to potentially trade for him. Why do you think John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan are always trying to prop him up? Because they want another team to take the bait. No Body in the 49ers organization 
once Trey Lance to fail. They may be okay with admitting that they whiffed on the pick and he's not a good fit. But I don't think Kyle Shanahan is intentionally setting Trey Lance up to be unsuccessful. He's a quarterback. What are quarterbacks supposed to do? Throw the damn football. He had, what, 15 passing attempts? I think that's good enough for him to get some meaningful reps to show that he's made improvement as a passer. And he still looks like the same quarterback that he was pre-injury. He changed the throwing motion, but that obviously hasn't helped. And he still doesn't have it. In between the head. He still can't read defenses. Still struggling to dissect coverages. The guy just isn't it. He may not be a bust. At least right now. But I think it's fair to say that he just isn't a good fit. In Kyle Shanahan's offense.